we should have held on out of the four principles, namely religion, economic development, sense gratification, and liberation, liberation has to be taken very seriously. The other three are subject to destruction of the stringent law of nature, death. Purport. Moksha, or liberation, has to be taken very seriously, even at the sacrifice of the other three items. As advised by Sutta Goswami in the beginning of Shiva Bhagavatam, religious principles are not based on success in economic development. Because we are very attached to sense gratification, we go to God, to the temple or churches for some economic reasons. Then again, economic development does not mean sense gratification. Everything should be adjusted in such a way that we attain liberation. Therefore, in this verse, liberation, moksha is stressed. The other three items are material and therefore subject to destruction. Even if somehow we accumulate a great bank balance in this life and possess many material things, everything will be finished at death. In Bhagavad Gita, it is said, death is the supreme personality of Godhead, who ultimately takes away everything acquired by the materialistic person. Foolishly, we do not care for this. Foolishly, we are not afraid of death. Nor do we consider that death will take away everything acquired by the process of dharma, artha, and karma. By karma or pious activities, we may be elevated to the heavenly planets, but this does not mean freedom from the clutches of birth, death, old age, and disease. The purpose is that we can sacrifice our interests in chaivarga, religious principles, economic development, sense gratification, but we cannot sacrifice the cause of liberation. Regarding liberation, it is stated in Bhagavad Gita 4.9, Chakta Deham Punarjama Naiti. Liberation means that after giving up this body, one does not have to accept another material body. <coughs> to the impersonalist, liberation means merging into the existence of impersonal Brahman, but factually, this is not moksha. Because one has to again fall down into this material world from that impersonal position. One should therefore seek the shelter of the Supreme Personality of Godhead and engage in His devotional service. That is real liberation. The conclusion is that we should not stress pious activities, economic development, and sense gratification, but should concern ourselves with approaching Lord Vishnu in His spiritual planets of which the topmost is Goloka Vrindavan, where Lord Krishna lives. Therefore, this Krishna consciousness movement is the greatest gift for persons who are actually desiring liberation. Mukam karati va chalam bhangam lankai te kiri yaki pantama mande shi guram tigataminam Aumakyana tiranda seaganjala shalakaya so what is the purpose of death? Death has a purpose. And the purpose of death is twofold. For the non-devotees, death is God. They see God as death, the time of death. And that's why death must be there. Here it says in Bhagavad Gita, death is the supreme personality of Godhead who takes away everything acquired by a materialistic person. So they may not believe in God, they may be atheists in this life. But one thing they cannot control, and that is their death. For God, how can death, God die? How can there be death for God? So the atheists think they are God but they have to die, so that proves they are not God. And they will meet God at the time of death. Death is God for them, because that ends their foolishness, it ends their foolish idea that they are controlling the sun and the moon and everything. That is their foolish idea. Foolishly, we do not care that death is taking away everything. With every rising and setting of the sun, the day passes and is lost. And why do we not Worship the Lord of the heart. So, after death, well, here it's talking about liberation, uh, moksha. 
For the impersonalist, this means merging. But this, this liberation is not eternal. Liberation should be eternal, which is liberation. But this liberation is not eternal. They have to come back again because it is not the eternal function of the soul to be in the white light. Imagine just living in the light and being one of the molecules there. It's not much fun. It's pretty boring and you're not having any nice relationships with the other molecules. You're just sitting in the Brahman. And because it's not our natural position, we come back to to the material world where there is a chance for relationships. So what is liberation if it's not merging with the light? Prabhupada explains, going back to home, back to Godhead, that is real liberation. Go look up and down. So he also says we should sacrifice our material propensities for this, for going back to home, back to Godhead. We should desire to go back. Very few Men desire to go back to God, as Prabhupada says. But if you do desire, then Krishna will certainly help us. So in this day of Brahma, the history goes, Dhruva Maharaj was the first to go back to home, back to Godhead. And uh, so at first he was caught up in Dharma Artakama Moksha. He wanted a kingdom greater than his grandfather who owned the whole, was the king of the whole universe. And uh, that was, he realized later this was very foolish of him. When he met the Lord, then he actually, actually wanted only to serve the Lord. And that is the best thing, and that is liberation also. Anyone who wants to go back to God, may Krishna will help. So, as I said before, the news of this world is that everybody is cooking. The universe is like a gigantic cooking pot and we're all being cooked by time. Everyone has to suffer birth, death, disease, and old age. So they try different paths to get free, this karmakanda, jnanakanda, yoga. But no one can get out because this, this karma and jnana and yoga, these, these paths, they finish when this world is finished. So Chaibhargya, Dharma, Arta, Kama, this is also finished when this world is finished. Only liberation, only the spiritual world is there. So because these processes are only within this world, only Bhakti and chanting Hare Krishna, that is eternal. And that is the only reality, as we say. The holy name is the only reality in this world. So Narutam Das Thakur has sung Karma Kanda, Gyana Kanda, that is that the path of karma and the path of jnana, they're like pots of poison. And this is also this dharma artha kama, if it's not used for Krishna, it's also poison. Because it will take, keep us here in this suffering of this material world. We'll travel through so many different species of life. So what is the real path? Kevala Anandakanda, the path of bliss, and that is the path of bhakti, or Krishna consciousness. So in this world, there are people who follow other paths. They're bewildered by the illusory energy. Yogi of Alkyas described Jaimini, the other compilers of the religious scriptures, don't know the secret confidential religious system of the 12 Mahajans where you can get permanent uh, moksha, or liberation. They don't understand the value of chanting Hare Krishna mantra, because their minds are so attached to the ritualistic ceremonies mentioned in the Vedas. So their intelligence has become dull. Shida Swami makes a comment that in Ayurvedic medicine, there is a medicine called Mripta Sanjeevani. Mripta means death, and Sanjeevani means to give life. So this was, even a dead man could get life by drinking that medicine. In, in the Ramayana, when, Ram, when Lakshman was suffering on consciousness, this medicine was brought to revive him, Mitta Sanjeevani, from the Himalayas. But most Ayurvedic doctors don't give you this. They give you something called Chikatu, which is three bitter medicines, 
when you have fever, neem, calmate, and chirata, very bitter medicine. Without knowing there's a very nice medicine called Mita Sanjeevani, they give you better medicine. So the three paths of karma, jnana, and yoga are compared to the bitter medicines. And Sankirtan Yoga is compared to the nectar, Mita Sanjeevani, that brings back a dead man to life, that brings our intelligence back to life. So Goloka Premadan Harinam Sankirtan, the spiritual world, Goloka Vrindavan, from there is coming the holy name down to us. But unfortunately, Ratina and Jiro Kinyatala, we have no attraction for this. This is the path of liberation. It's coming and it's the means and it's the end as well. It's the goal and it is the process. There is a story about one beggar who came to a king and he said to the king that, I am such a poor man I'd like to see what gold looks like. So the king said, all right, go up these stairs, turn left, open the door, and you will see gold. He went up the stairs, he turned left, he opened the door, and he saw gold. And then he realized, oh, the steps I climbed were also made of gold. I just didn't know what gold was. So for us also, our process is gold. Our process is also spiritual. And by following this process, we're, beginning, we're becoming relieved of all our karma and we're not getting any new karma. And so this is the, the potency of chanting the holy name, Hare Krishna. One time somebody asked me the question, are they chanting Hare Krishna in Goloka Vrindavan? Well, if that's where it's coming from, then they must be chanting Hare Krishna up there too. And it is said in Krishna book, when Krishna left the Rasa dance, when he left the gopis, then they were chanting Hare Krishna in separation from Krishna. And so it says they returned to the bank of Jamuna, they were expecting Krishna must return to them, and they simply engaged in chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram, Ram. So there is uh, four kinds of destruction in this world. According to Canto 4, chapter, Canto, sorry, Canto 12, chapter 4. Canto 12, chapter 4. Four kinds of annihilation. Uh, the first kind is when this day of Brahma is finished and Brahma goes to sleep, then the three worlds are destroyed. That is called occasional, Nairitika annihilation. Then the second kind is when the whole universe is finished. That is called prakritika, when all the elements of the universe are finished. And there is a, another type of liberation, which is called nitya, or constant. That means that at every second, cells in our body are born, and cells in our body are being destroyed. Our body is always being destroyed at every second. And that's why Shri Prabhupada said that we, have, we are not 70 years old, we are 70 years dead. We have, been, we have died for 70 years. When we're actually alive, that's our spiritual body. Now we're in our dead body, which is always constantly dying. So three kinds, Nainitika, Prakritika, and Nitya, and the fourth guy is Atyantika. That means final liberation, final annihilation. Let's see, I think there is in this verse, Atyantika is mentioned here, and it's most important. The final liberation, the final annihilation, is when we go back to God and back to home. When everything is finished, this universe, this body, and the day of Brahma, end of the night of Brahma. Everything's finished, no more death. Then we go back to God. That is the final annihilation. And we won't have to have any more annihilations anymore after that one. So that's what it's called the final. So we want to go back to God here. But uh, what does it mean to go back to God here? Some people say you should remain in holy places like Vrindavan or some holy town and then you can go back to God here. But Srila Prabhupada explains in Purport Bhagavad Gita, 
chapter 8, verse 19, that a pure devotee can live anywhere and create the atmosphere of Vrindavan by his devotional service. It was Lord Chaitanya, so, uh, sorry, it was Sri Adoita who told Lord Chaitanya, wherever you are, there is Vrindavan. So we could say the same for Sri Prabhupada. Wherever Sri Prabhupada was, that was Vrindavan. He brought Vrindavan everywhere, all over the world. So Varija Prabhu, he had one experience. Jai Bhuni time. He had an experience that he was in the presence of Shiva Prabhupada and he had such a very strong spiritual feeling when he was in Prabhupada's presence. And after experiencing Prabhupada's presence, he did deity worship. And the first time he went into the deity room, he felt like he was in the presence of Srila Prabhupada. So then he understood, oh, <laughs> Prabhupada is bringing us Krishna. Because Krishna, the deity, is Krishna. And when, you, when you're with the deity, you feel in the presence of the spiritual world in Krishna. And so, another purport, teachings of Lord Kapila, Prabhupada says, a pure devotee does not pray for liberation or cessation of the cycle of birth and death because he does not consider that is so important. Most important thing for a devotee is getting a chance to hear the pastimes and glories of the Lord. So those who engage in chanting and hearing and service in this world, they get the same opportunity in the spiritual world. Now we are chanting Hare Krishna. We will chant Hare Krishna there. We are hearing about Krishna, but hear about Krishna there. We're cooking for Krishna, we'll cook for Krishna there. We're serving Tulsi here, we'll serve Tulsi there. And so the same, everything is in the spiritual world. And when, as long as we are doing those things here, we're in the spiritual world. We're actually in Goloka, and we are chanting about Krishna when we're serving the Tulsi. Tulsi is a desire tree. You can have all your desires. Did you know you have many desire trees here? So whatever you want from the desire tree, you can just ask, and the desire tree will give you. Pray to Tulsi Devi, you need something. And so we do have Vrindavan. Vrindavan is where Tulsi is present. That's why, that's where Vrindavan got the name, after Vrinda Devi. And so Vrindavan is here. Navadeep is here, because Gornitai is here. And so, the devotees, they simply want to serve Krishna and then they can understand that they're in the spiritual world. Now, two ways that the Lord comes in this world. Parabrahma and Shakta Brahma. So, Parabrahma means the deity and Shakta Brahma means the holy name. So, which one is more merciful, the deity or the holy name? Everybody knows. Yes? The holy name. Jai. Because he, you can go anywhere and chant the holy name. The deity, you have to come to the temple. Except for Jagannath Rathiyatra. He goes out. But now the deity is in the temple. And uh, you, if you want to have the benefit of his association, you have to come here. But for Shakta Brahma, the holy name, you can chant anytime, anywhere, and you can be in the association of Krishna. So, when you're happy chanting Hare Krishna, you're in the spiritual world. So, we did discuss this in another class. Which is better, to stay here, birth after birth, or to go back to Godhead? And Srila Prabhupada has said that if you preach, you're already back to Godhead. You're in the spiritual world. You're Jivan Mukta. You're liberated. You're with Krishna. So, when we go back to Godhead, then we will be doing the same things here, there, as we are doing here. And this is the purpose of life, and that is what this purport is saying, moksha is most important. So, if we follow the instructions of the spiritual master, then we will become qualified to enter Krishna's pastimes in the spiritual world. Chant 16 rounds, without offense, follow the regular principles, and preach, and we can go Godhead in this very life. So I'll stop here. If there's any questions or comments.
can ask at this point. Yes. Yes. <laughs> you know place, but our consciousness is somewhere else. So what do that? Sometimes we may be in the temple, but not in the temple. Our consciousness is somewhere else. Like one time when the Vodhi asked Shri Prabhupada when they were in Vrindavan. Shri Prabhupada, what's the difference between Goloka Vrindavan and this Vrindavan? Shri Prabhupada said, there's no difference, but your mind is in America. <laughs> So, that's the problem. The problem is, even though we may be in the temple, we may be in Maya, so therefore, we have to consciously choose to remember Krishna. As we've repeatedly said, we have a choice. You may be in the temple and, and be in Maya, or you may be outside of the temple and be in Krishna consciousness. It's all a matter of choice. So when you see yourself in Maya, then you can cry to the spiritual master, to the devotees, to the holy name, please, save me, save me. It's described that the lust, anger, greed, these are like robbers that take away our spiritual life. So when these robbers come, we have to cry for help from Guru, Sadhu, and Shastra. And then they will help us to bring us back to Krishna consciousness. Any other question? Mm -hmm. Mataji, you mentioned about the deities and coming to the temple. Just wondering uh, what were the Prabhupada's, your Prabhupada's instructions. Uh, there seem to be many, um, many devotees who have deities at home, but then it means that they don't come to the temple mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. much because right. of the, So, what do you. Well, his instructions were that uh, you can have deities in the home if you live far away from the temple, basically. That was his instructions, that if you live near the temple, you don't need deities in the home. But that means that you eat the prasad in the temple and everything like that. So if you're not eating the prasad in the temple, then you need deities at home. If you're not having prasad in the temple, then you do need to offer your food. And if, you know, if you have a special diet or something, you cannot eat the temple prasana. So then you need to have your own deities in your home. But it's uh, Vrindavan, it's, uh, there's another example is Vrindavan where everybody has deities. Even though there are the main deities, every home has deities. And even though they have deities in their home, they still go to the main temples. So that's another example that could be followed by those who have deities in their home. That even though they have their own deities, they want to see the presiding deities of the dawn. So these these are the presiding deities here. And so in Vrindavan, everybody goes to all the temples every day, or at least one of the one of the major temples or all of the major temples every day to see. So even though we have our own deities, we go to see Krishna Balaram, Radha Shyam, every day. We don't want to miss it because it's 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 very wonderful. They're they're very powerful deities, and we understand that at, at evening arti the demigods are coming to see them, and uh, they're having their eightfold pastimes in Vrindavan. Of course, they're having them in New York, everywhere, where these deities are. One time, Prabhupada, he, uh, in New York, the devotees decided to do Mangalarti at earlier time, perhaps 3.30, 3.45, so the book distributors could go out earlier. And when Prabhupada came and he saw the deities, he said, the deities, Krishna is not getting enough sleep. He works hard the whole day herding his cows, and now he needs his sleep. So then they realized, oh, we made a mistake, and they put the Mangalarti back to 4.30. So I don't know where he's going to herd his cows in New York City, but <laughs> somehow he manages. He brings her down with him in New York City. So it is, it is very important that we go to the temple. It's called Padasevanam. 
the going to the temple using your legs. Of course, you don't have like we don't use our legs much. We use our cars, four wheels, but that's okay. Um, same idea. Um, but uh, we get purified by coming to the temple. Actually, the temple is meant to be an oasis of association. And that's another reason. It wasn't simply the deity worship, the Param Brahma, but the Shabda Brahma is also there at the temple. In Vrindavan, we have 24 hours kirtan going on. So Shabda Brahma and Param Brahma are both there. And so that's another advantage. Of course, now in Vrindavan, they have the radio, so you can have the 24 hour kirtan in your home also. You don't have to go to the temple. So uh, modern technology. But, uh, but some people are too sick or old, they cannot come, so for them it is also beneficial. And some have children and they're too busy, so they can have them. So they have their own deities and they have the radio, the kirtan going. Yes? If you have pictures, yeah, Krishna is there, but you cannot express your love as much to the picture as to the deity. So the deity is for us to cook. I mean, the picture you can also cook, but you can't dress the deity. So the deity, you sew for him, you bathe him, you dress him. The pictures you can cook and offer prasada, so that's good. But that's, oh, that's okay. Whatever, whatever works for you. When I first joined, we were we didn't have deities in the temples. We just had pictures. We were worshiping Gordita and Panchatapa pictures, and I was considered as good as a deity as far as offering and things go. In Florida, we didn't have deities. In in Dallas, there were no deities until Radha Kalachandra came. I think from. So, about two or three years of deities, just pictures. So you yeah, know, pictures are powerful, but you just can't do all the four. You can't do archana with pictures. That you have to come to the temple. Any other questions? Yes. body when they get murdered or killed or mm -hmm. they do suicidal act, their spiritual life doesn't get liberation. Yeah. Uh, is it true or just like it's a, just a fiction? No, it's true. If you um, commit suicide or you're murdered, generally you become a ghost. The ghost has no material body, it has only a subtle body, which is not spiritual. It is full of suffering. The ghost has all the material desires that the human beings have in the body, but it has no way to fulfill them. So imagine, he wants to eat, he wants to make, he wants to sleep, he cannot sleep, he cannot eat, he cannot have sex life, because he has no material body. And he suffers. It's, it, because if you commit suicide, that's the same as murder, and you, you are punished by the laws of nature, breaking the laws of nature. If you're murdered, then yes, you can also become a ghost. So that's why we do in, in the Vedic culture that you have the tradition of offering prasada to the forefathers so that in case they got a ghost body, then this will give them liberation from that ghost body. They will get an, another birth. They will get another opportunity to work off their karma in the material world and go back to Godhead even. So as devotees, we offer uh, after three days after a uh, devotee has died, then we have a feast for everyone. And we offer prasad to the picture of that departed devotee. And that's very beneficial. If they eat, if they get prasad, then they can be liberated from hell. If they're in hellish planets or if they're in a ghost body, they can be liberated. Or if they're in a human body and they're suffering some terrible disease or something, then that will help them also. 
or mental depression or something, that would help them. If we do offer prasada to their picture. Any other questions? Jai Ogoish Shri Prabhupada, Hare Krishna. Shri Prabhupada, Hare Krishna. Shri Prabhupada, Hare Krishna.